Matthew 24, 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branches yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Call Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barakha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barakha Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way we worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and sincerity, always in charity. It's Brother Matati from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And you can see the title of the lesson is entitled Learn a Parable of the Fig Tree, which is taken out of the, this precept we just read. Matthew 24, 32. Let's read it again. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. So what things is Jehovah Shah telling us that we should look for? Right? Because just as uh, we experience the changing of the seasons, you know, we know when it's spring coming in and everything start to bud and, you know, when uh, summer is coming, right? Everything is, is, is grown. Well, this is how we can tell the signs that we're in or the times that we in through the signs that our Lord Yahweh Shah gave us. Now let's start up in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. Let's scroll up and let's start at the, the fourth verse. And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you, right? Because when you scroll up even more, the disciples asked him privately, when shall be the end of the world? And when it was the sign of his coming. Matter of fact, let's start at three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. So you see that now. You got guys saying that they is the anointed, and you got guys saying that they are sent by the anointed. You know? And they're deceiving many. But those whom know the Lord's voice, as it is written in John, the 10th chapter, he said, my sheep hear my voice, a stranger they will not follow. We understand, you know, that these are all signs that our Lord is on his way. Right. It tells us here in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> it's the second chapter, Revelation 2. And two, it says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. So these are guys who said that they were sent right by the anointed. You see a delegate messenger once sent forth with orders specifically applied to the 12 apostles of the Hamashiach in a broader sense applied to other eminent Christian teachers. You see, so guys who saying that they were sent. By the anointed, officially a commissioner of the anointed, specifically an ambassador of the gospel. You see, so these are guys that are saying <laughs> that they are anointed to teach these things, man. Going back to Matthew 24. Right. And that's why we're seeing, uh, you know, all these different, you know, guys come up out of the woodwork, man, and all these uh, different camps and doctrines. Just seeing what they had there. But it says, uh, verse 6, And ye shall, back in Matthew 24 and 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And this is exactly what we're uh, uh, hearing and seeing, you know, uh, uh, during this time. Right? You got this Israeli and, Ga and Gaza uh, a conflict that's going on, man. You know, Turkey uh, talking about getting involved and you got Yemen and, you know, these uh, different Muslim uh, states. You see. So these are all wars and rumors of wars and what the Lord told us to look for. So this is how we know that it's even at the doors, as Yahweh Shah said. Um, this is the book of Jeremiah 51 and 46. I started up. 
45, it says, my people go ye out of the midst of her, right? Like it says in Micah 2 and 10, arise and depart because this is not our rest. It will destroy us with a, a sword destruction. I'm roughly paraphrasing Micah, the second chapter, the, uh, uh, the 10 verse, you know? So it's not telling us to physically leave. It's talking about what? Uh, mentally being invested within this place, man. Nah, you know, we already looking forward to the downfall of this present evil world, man. As it is written in the book of Hebrews, it says here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. So that's where our mind is. That's where our heart is. Right. So it says, my people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And how do you deliver yourself from the fierce anger of the Lord? Well, it tells us here. I don't know where it's at. In the book of First Timothy. The fourth chapter, the 16 verses says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, right? Continue in them for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee, man. So it's a particular doctrine that's going to get us delivered. You got all these guys with these different doctrines. You got all these guys that saying that they're coming in, uh, you know, in the name of the Lord. But yet how they move, the things that they're doing, the things that they're saying, the things that they're teaching is not lining up with what the Holy Scriptures say. This James 1 and 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls, man. When you go into this word, word in the Greek is logos, right? As you can see, it says of speech, a word uttered. But uh, I want to scroll down to... Definition D, it says doctrine, teaching. You see? The engrafted word, right? The engrafted doctrine, which is able to save you, going back to this Timothy, right? So going back to Jeremiah 51 and 45, my people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul. This is how you deliver your soul, by taking heed thereto unto the uh, 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 the word of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah that's coming from his true prophets that's why peter wrote and said what that we have a more sure word of prophecy that you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place how do you know we have the light isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it's because there is no light in them man you see how these precepts all line up and tie in together right in the things that the apostles of Great Millstone and the elder bishops on down, the things that they're, that they're saying through the spirit is actually happening throughout the earth, man. According to Habakkuk, the second chapter, man, we can see these things speaking. It says at the end, it shall speak and not lie. The Lord said in your days, will I perform what I speak the word and I will perform it. And this is what we're seeing happening, man. Right. The MOTB. Uh, brothers uh, shared an article about um matter of fact let's see if i could uh, find it matter of fact let me pause it <laughs> yep here it is as you can see this is um end times headlines thousands are lining up for elon musk brain c hip implants you see Now, I didn't read it personally myself, but I had seen a brother shared it. You know, actually, a brother shared it in two different uh, 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 chat rooms, man. You see? So these are all signs. These are all signs. Let's go back. Verse 46 now, Jeremiah 51 and 46, it says, unless your heart faint, you see? See, we're, we're not invested within this place. And if our mind is set on this place, then guess what? When we see these things happening, your heart going to faint, man. Let's get that word faint. <laughs> you see, to be weak, to be timid, to be fearful, scared of what's about to happen, man. Right? But if we already departed from this place and we understand that destruction must happen first, we understand that the, the downfall of society and, and pestilence and persecution and all these things has to happen before the kingdom of heaven can be established. We understand that. And that's why it says in Isaiah, the 26th chapter, he whose mind is stayed on the Lord will keep him in perfect peace. There's another precept in Psalms 112 where it says he is not afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You see, we got these words, man. <laughs> the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. You see, so we already departed out of this place, man. 
as it is written in Philippians, the third chapter, it tells us, um, uh, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even word it. Let's just grab it. Philippians three and 20 for our conversation is in heaven. When you go into this word conversation, it says the commonwealth of citizens. So it says our citizenship, you see that in Strong's definition, our citizenship is in the heavens. See, these people are from beneath. They're worried about the society. They're scared of the things to come. But we are from above. As it is written in Revelation, the 12th chapter says, Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, because the devil shall come down with great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time. But the beginning of that precept said, Rejoice, O ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, man. Well, our citizenship is in heaven. So as we see these things, man, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's a, a, a tree of life, man. There's a precept in Proverbs where it says, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. But when it has come, it is a tree of life, man. So it invigorates our spirit when we see these things. Back in Jeremiah 51 and 46, unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year and after that and another year shall come a rumor. And that's what we're seeing, seeing. These different conflicts, right? These different proxy wars and you know, uh, 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 jostling back and forth and, um, what they, what the hell they call that, uh, tariffs for lack of a better word, sanctions, sanctions that they putting on each other, <laughs> you know, these are all a part of the rumor one year and a rumor another year. It says in violence in the land, ruler against ruler, but real soon, man, it's going to break out. Suddenly it shall be violence in the land, rumor I mean, ruler against ruler, man. Back in Matthew 24 and 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, man. So it's just the beginning of hell that these people is about to experience. You know? And it tells us in Luke, right? Which is uh, pretty much the same account. Luke, the 21st chapter. And um, let's start at the 25th verse. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And we just recently had a, um, a, a solar eclipse that just took place, man. Right? That's the signs in the sun. Signs in the moon is your, uh, your blood moons, which Esau called a lunar eclipse. Right? And in the stars, he say, oh, well, this comet is passing by every year. Uh, this comet here and this light there in the sky. Those are all signs, man. And upon the earth, distress of nations. Is that not what we're seeing? All these different people in the uproar, right? With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, when you go into this word perplexity, as you can see, it says the state of one who is in perplexity. Go to the root word. It says to be without resources, to be at a loss with oneself. So they're not going to know what to do, where to go, or how to conduct themselves, right? Because it's going to be a lack of resources, man. We already see uh, uh, prices of housing going up. A lot of uh, homelessness is rising. <laughs> you know? People out here uh, doing bad, man. In the Strong's definition, it says to have no way out. That is, be at a loss mentally. So these people ain't going to know what to do, man. Right? And we were warned of these things. These are all the signs that our Lord would be approaching. Going back to that Matthew 24, we started with that is even at the doors, man. The second edge is nine and one. He answered me then and said, measure thou the times diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we see the Lord is visiting, man. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, right? And we're seeing an uptick in earthquakes, man, major earthquakes too. Where thousands, ten thousands of people is being, you know, uh, uh, called back off the earth, man. <laughs> you know, verse four, then, sh then shall thou well understand that the most I spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, man. So these are all signs. Right. Back in Luke 21, 26, men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. But in that book, of uh, uh, Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah just told us. 
for uh, us not to fear. So our hearts don't faint. <laughs> you see? And this is why we keep, you know, our mind uh, occupied, man. We keep our eyes single. We stay occupied in prophecies because this is what's going to keep us protected. According to Psalms, the 91st chapter, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Lord, right? Ain't no plague shall come, come near his dwelling. Roughly paraphrasing that, man. You see? So this is our hope. Verse 27, and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh, man. Which is why Paul wrote unto us and told us here in the book of Romans 13 and 11. It says in that knowing the time, how do we know the times? Because we're measuring them diligently according to uh, second interest nine we just read. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed, man. You see, even at the doors, our redemption draweth nigh. Back in Luke 21, 29, and he spake to them a parable, learn a parable of the fig tree. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of the Most High is nigh at hand, man. <laughs> and the Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah for allowing us to see these things, man. You know, for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Because through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Wisdom, is how we're able to discern these things. Wisdom of Solomon, the eighth chapter. And um, and when you start at one, it, it says, Wisdom reacheth. From one end to another mightily, and sweetly do as she order all things. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse to be joined, right? And I was a lover of her beauty. So to scroll down, we know that the subject matter is talking about wisdom. Verse 8, if a man desire much experience, she, being wisdom, knoweth things of old, and conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches and can expound dark sentences. That's these parables. <laughs> she foreseeth signs and wonders. You see, this is how we be. Uh, this is how we're able to see the signs. This is how we know that it's near, even at the door. Roughly paraphrasing, in the events of seasons and times. Therefore, I purpose to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and a comfort in cares and grief, man. So while these people going to be out here in perplexity, at a loss, not knowing what to do, the Lord said he got us, man. You know? He told us that the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against us, man. That's written in 2nd Ezra, the 2nd chapter. You know, so just wanted to, you know, uh, speak on that. <laughs> Because, man, we're getting closer each and every day, man. And may Yahweh Basham Yahweh try to keep his Holy Spirit upon us, allow us to stay diligent, allow us to continually uh, uh, stand upon our watch, right, as it is written in Habakkuk, the second chapter. You know, so that we can look for these things, so that we can report these things as we see these things coming, you know, according to prophecy, so we can filter them through the, uh, the Holy Scriptures, you know, so that we can warn the hopeful elect, man, so that we all can uh, be prepared. As it is written in Matthew, the 25th chapter, the five, the five wise virgins, they were ready when, 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 when it was time to enter in, man. And the five foolish virgins, they wasn't. You know, so as we see these things, the Lord is showing us signs uh, uh, that we should be well prepared, you know, that we should know and understand the time that we're living in. So, hey, Lord will, I hope this is out of fine. Thwadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory. To Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Brachah Kodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, all is in charity. Shalom.